Hello fashion sewers, I hope you are well. If you're new to my channel, I'm Colleen G. Lee. Hello. On this series, in this series, I'm going to be answering your fashion sewing questions around garment construction and fashion sewing. So I have three questions from Kat, Helena and Karen. Um, Kat and Helena questions are pretty similar to the technique that I'm going to be describing for them. Please excuse my voice. And um, it's all up to do around the topic of bias binding. So Kat is asking questions and and, and excuse me, I'm, I'm not reading questions directly, but I'm just giving you a brief overview of the questions, so I will be looking down. So, um, here's this tight armhole edges, um, shoulder seams, and she wants a nice flat finish, and she's thinking about using Hong Kong seam or French seams, um, because she's working with very tight armhole or very tight curves. Now, one of the best ways to use bias binding um, if you're having problems with it not being as flat as you would like it to be is to actually press the bias binding into a curve. So bias binding usually comes in a roll or it comes on a flat card and it is possible to mould it by pressing and you could be pressing it using your iron up and down and you can shape it as you are um, pressing it into shape. And it's a great way to easily put it into a curved shape. And that follows on with Elena's question next, um, is that once you decide on what shape of curve you want, whether it's going to be a convex curve or concave curve, you can, put, you can do that before you even put it onto a curve. If you are struggling and you want it to be as flat as possible and Helene is talking about really tight armhole curves or tight curves in, in, in the sense of it could be around the neckline. The choice that you need to make is that with the Hong Kong seam, that's also possible to do that. With a French seam, you can get a beautiful curve, tight curve with a French seam. You just need to make sure that that French seam is really small. We're talking really, really, really tiny. And that will be your best approach would be to do test samples. Because you can use both techniques, the Hong Kong seam and also the French seam within a garment. If you're going to use it for a shoulder, for example, which you've mentioned in your post, um, I would perhaps go for um, a Hong Kong seam. Because using a French seam can sometimes twist the seam and I think if you add a Hong Kong seam it will it'll keep the shoulder seam a lot straighter so do bear that in mind but do a test. The other part of the question was about raglan sleeves. I would probably be using the same technique but yeah um, would be a Hong Kong seam finish. Hong Kong, Hong Kong seams um, are a great way to give professional look to an inside of a garment but um raglan sleeves can either be straight like this or it can be shaped as well and you can also use the same technique of gently pressing it to the shape of the raglan especially if it's a shaped raglan tight double hem fold yeah again i would i would use the hong kong seam finish and like i said do tests and keep your test samples because it's a great reminder to you as well. So I hope I've answered all your questions, Kat, and hope that if you do have any problems, then, then just put it in the comment box below. Helena. Helena is asking about woven bias on woven concave curves, and she has a problem that it won't lie flat. The same applies um, to Helena, is to press the curve. This is a bias tape press it into the shape of a concave. So a concave is like that, and a convex is that way. I've got that right, <laughs> I think that's right, convex is that way, and the concave is that way. So she's having problems with it lying flat when she actually applies her bias binding. So it really is, it really is easy to do. Just make sure that you don't stretch it too much 
and you'll find it a lot more easy to install and then you can press in the same way. I hope that answers your question. Um, oh, th there was another part to Helena's question and it's regarding bias binding on ready-made garments and sometimes when she sees ready-made garments, the bias binding isn't necessarily on a curve, it could be on a straight and that is just about style features. So I hope I've read that question um, correctly. I've, I've struggled with it a little bit. But um, yeah, bias binding can be used not only just for covering curves or covering um, seams to give a nice professional finish, but it can also be used as a design feature as well. And lastly is Karen, and she was talking about lining a top and whether you she, she should go ahead, because she doesn't want to use facing and she wants to know if she can use the burrito method. Now, I, I must admit, I must I looked this up because it's like, burrito? The first thing I thought of was, isn't that, isn't that just Mexican food, really? I was like, oh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I haven't come across that technique. Um, so I, had, I did have a quick look at it, and yes, you can. If you don't want to use facing on your garments, and you don't want to line it um, in, if, if you don't want to use facing to finish off the edges, of any of your part of your garment then yet yeah, you can use the burrito method that's fine absolutely fine so I hope that answers your questions so if you have any questions that you want me to answer in this new segment of um, fashion and sewing Q&A then please put me in the comment box below and I'd be more than happy to do my best to answer your questions and I will see you next time